Uh, bunker play for club players often creates quite a bit of anxiety. And, and the reason for that is as soon as uh, players hit it into a bunker, and it might be from 200 yards away, <coughs> excuse me, um, they would start to panic about it because they are perceived as hazards. So as soon as the label is put on to bunkers as being a hazard, then amateur players start to get a fear response. Um, so as soon as they're walking, all the time they're walking up the fairway towards the green or you know, towards that bunker, then probably what they're doing is they're mentally rehearsing a disaster shot or the way that they're talking to themselves would be, oh, uh, you know, I'm in a bunker, I'm gonna really struggle to get out of this bunker. Um, you know, just creating a, a disaster scenario. I don't know many kind of club players that would go, oh great, I'm in a bunker. It's supposed to be actually an easier shot than a chip shot. You know, that's, that doesn't really happen even though a bunker shot really should be easier than a chip shot because it's, you actually don't, you've got a bit more margin for error because you've, you don't actually hit the golf ball. You hit the sand rather than the ball. I, I would say it's 50-50, in all honesty. I think um, the way that the, the club player would approach a bunker shot would create that anxiety, but that then has a knock-on effect on their actual technique. It causes a lot of tension in the wrists and the hands, which really kind of stop um, a club player getting into a, a flow state and losing the rhythm. What that often does, because I think a lot of it with bunker players, club players very rarely have a, a lesson with their coach or their, you know, their PGA pro um, on how to get out of bunkers. Because what players tend to do, in my experience, is dig and they'll, they'll lean with the, the handle of the golf club forward. And so they'll try and hit down and chop into the bunker. But the, the way the actual sand wedge, which is the club that you'll be using to come out of a bunker, is designed. You have to keep the loft on the club face. You have to keep the loft on the club face so it can bounce through the sand and come out the other side. Whereas a lot of club players will hit down into it, if that makes sense. So the, image, the images that they create in the mind and their history of having this bad technique will be, all those things will be kind of running through the mind as they approach the bunker shot. So they're, they're creating a disaster scenario from, from the start, really. That's my experience with, with club players and bunkers. <laughs> Uh, definitely, definitely. I've done um, quite a bit of work on this with, with club players and what, what we need to do is we need to kind of Im imagine that where the golf ball is, it's sitting at the bottom of kind of um, a bowl or a saucer type of shape because what club players tend to do is they will just want to hit down, straight down into the sand and then the club gets stuck and the, the ball often doesn't get out of the bunker. But what we need to envisage, if the ball was here, is the club coming in, shallowing out, and then coming out the other side. And if you do that, you'll get the golf ball. You'll certainly get the golf ball out of the bunker every single time. And you know, and with practice, and which is another thing, because you know a lot of club players don't practice bunker shots. With practice, you'll sort the distance control out. You know, I, I work with uh, kind of ten. 10 European tour players, and most of them guys, they would rather have the ball in a bunker than in the rough around the greens because they actually have more control out of it because they get this saucer type motion in their mind and they have a lot of control out of the bunker. And it's, it is predominantly, I would say, a technical thing. Um, you know, having the right technique, getting this saucer type image for the golf club to come in and then come out the other side and um, they have that automatically and obviously they play golf every day and it's their job and but we can all get better we can all get better and using that saucer images will definitely definitely help without a doubt and also um, having the thought of keeping the loft on the club face so rather than, we've got you know usually about 56 60 degrees of loft if they start to lean the golf club this way, that's when we get that chopping action, 
but if they keep the loft on the club face all the way through so the sand wedge can actually work its work its magic um, all the way through the shot then that would be a, that would be a really good thing to think about um, to occupy the mind rather than going oh, I'm not going to get this out of the trap I'm going to make double bogey or whatever something like that whereas if they say right if I just keep the loft on the club face keep the loft on the club face keep the loft on the club face then that will that also encourages that kind of saucer shape motion as well. So rather than creating a disaster scenario, if they, I don't know, maybe they hit it into a bunker from 150 yards away, instantly if they start saying to themselves, right, okay, that's that bunker shot, I'm just going to keep the loft on the club face and that's going to give me that saucer effect. Keep the loft on the club face, give me that saucer effect. So you, they start to create a solution rather than creating the disaster scenario that I talked about earlier. I think it, it starts in practice, you know, so take a little bit of time to practice and if that means go and seeing um, one of the guys on, on here or, you know, your, your, your pro, you know, definitely get a bit of guidance. I will tell you now that your, your pro will tell you to keep the loft on the club face and get this saucer effect. So as soon as, as soon as a ball goes in a bunker, rather than creating the disaster scenario, start talking to yourself about how you want to do it. So you'll be walking up the fairway towards that bunker going, I need to keep the loft on the club face and I need to create this saucer effect. And if you do that and you're able to actually do that with a golf club, then bunkers will not be an issue. They won't be an issue and then the confidence cycles can start to build.